diversifying assessments because um, everybody has their comfort level with speaking out in class. And some people like to write, some people, you know, they feel um, they like to analyze, they like to um, draw comparisons. And so just trying to give them a real smorgasbord of ways that we assess things so that everybody, hopefully I'll hit the sweet spot with them at least once. Wherever possible, I try to let them see each other's work. They're all now so used to posting on Facebook and everywhere else, <laughs> videos and things, <laughs> that I think they're very comfortable in the online environment. So when we are, for example, in my pedagogy class, collecting information about teaching someone how to breathe better or how to sing with more resonance, we make a wiki. And so I give them a number of resources and they say, here, you know, I want you to cite at least two of these and we're going to compile this whole list of exercises together where you can all see it. And then at the end of the quarter, you know, we'll be able to print this thing that you guys have made. But I find that I get such great work from them. <laughs> we do a lot of discussion groups, a lot of interactive things where, you know, if students don't feel comfortable speaking out in class, sometimes they do with their peers. Lots of... Um, pairs, little um, projects where they're being very active and wherever I can, finding the opportunities for them to give each other feedback and themselves feedback and do teaching because that time that they spend thinking what are the components of this skill that I'm trying to learn or teach and then what are the strategies that I use to get better at it, they take that then into their own teaching not only of students of others but also of themselves in the practice room so that is everything we do I mean singing is all, all I do is try to get people to express themselves all day <laughs> so <laughs> it, it better be an honest representation of who they are a specific recital that I have a student doing and he's very interested in social justice also and it's been such an, a great thing for me to work with him. He brought in a song in Tagalog, um, which is Filipino, um, which was part of his heritage. And, you know, it was going to be the last thing on the recital and family coming, you know, and won't this be... And it was something I had grown up hearing on TV in Hawaii, so I knew it. And uh, it, it turned into doing a group of songs about colonialism. So all of them are about national pride, so even though the song is in Western harmony, um, the words are in Tagalog, and it's about, um, <clears throat> again, pride in, in the country. We added one in Hawaiian, um, written by the last queen of Hawaii. There's one in Spanish. There's two, one from Cuba and one from Argentina. But they're all grouped on a theme, not, you know, three songs of Schubert, like in, in many recital groups. And so it was a chance to bring in uh, underrepresented groups into this <laughs> format, which has been really, really neat. In the Art of Listening to Music class, which is a big GUR, 200 students usually uh, use a software called Poll Everywhere, so on their cell phone. <laughs> they actually get their cell phones out in class <laughs> with sanctioned <laughs> approval. Um, so I can ask a question, um, and their responses show up in real time on the screen. And so whatever we happen to be studying that day, I'll, I'll play a piece of music and say, what do you hear in this? Or, you know, if we're talking about music and math or music and how the brain works, how learning works, I find that, you know, students who are coming from, say, a neuroscience background or engineering background have amazing things to say about what's going on. And they then are relating to their own lives or, you know, political science or psychology. Uh, you know, they're, it's, it's a great tool. So we do that quite a bit, either online in discussions or in the big lecture. Thank you.